It is the premiere of end zone. The power cats of Louisville two years removed from a 4A state title in West Point taking on the green wave a team that knows things about 5A titles. How about Starkville? This guy's got a million offers. Braylon Burnside his yellow jackets beat Columbus last year. Could they do it again? Well, we'll show you and tell you also Lafayette that Michael Fair defense making the trek to Tupelo to play the Golden Wave and Ty Harden's bunch. All that and more coming up right now. WCBI Sports End Zone Show with John Sokoloff, Cam Dyer, and Grace Ibarra is brought to you by OCH Orthopedic Center, Jax, Carl Hogan Toyota, Wade Incorporated, and Clark Beverage Group. Special thank you to all of those sponsors, John Sokoloff and a new face to the end zone desk, happy Gracie Barra. Here. Grace, we're so happy to have you. You fit in like a glove and you've been witnessing some pretty good high school football. How, how have you been now liking it so far? I mean, what a better welcome to Mississippi than to go out and watch all these amazing high school football games. There's nothing like it. There's nothing like the student sections, the bands, the cheerleaders, the crowds. Everybody's just so happy that football is back. And I know you're happy that I'm football happy. is back. Our Cam Dyer's happy. Yes. We'll hear from him in a minute, but he was at our game of the week, sponsored by Carl Hogan Toyota. But West Point, Louisville, a couple of high powered teams. What were you kind of expecting to see out of this one? Because you talked to both coaches earlier in the week. I did, and I, I was out at Louisville last week and talking to Tyrone Shorter about his team, and he said it's a little bit different this year because he's starting seven sophomores, which seems like a lot, but he brings them up from such a young age that they really just fit into their program. And Coach Chambliss was like, I'm not really going to count them out because of their age because I know any team that Coach Shorter is coaching is going to be the best team that he puts out on the field. No doubt. And he's been around. This is his 25th season. Chris Chambliss is no spring chicken. He's won plenty <laughs> of state titles as well. Let's get out to those highlights. WCBI's High School Football Game of the Week is brought to you by Carl Hogan Toyota in Columbus. Okay, our game of the week car, 2022 Toyota Avalon. Grace, looks like our cam got there safe and sound, and we are happy. Style. And in style, looks great, drives great, go get you one tomorrow. Why not? Game of the week, West Point, Louisville. Shorter was saying they're going to play some smash mouth football. Let's see it. A little bit First, of Wildcats threatening, fourth down inside the five. Kieri and Jackson get, get to the end zone, stopped by Jordan Chandler. The Power Cats back on offense. Xavier Hunt dropping back to pass, but Jace Maller there to pick him off. So West Point now, all right, they got the turnover. Now they're trying to capitalize on the pick. Kanan Daniels looking for Colvin Hogan on fourth down to set up first and goal. You got to be gutsy, even if it's week one. Prepare for those big moments. Next play, Daniels punches it in. West Point up 6 nothing after the missed PAT. But seconds before halftime, Louisville's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. We're a tough team. We're not going down without a fight. Xavier Hunt finds Jackson in the back of the end zone. They're up 7-6 to six at the break, and Louisville gets it done 24-14. Cam Dyer, take us through it. Well, it was the game of the week for the reason. Louisville at West Point, and as expected, it was a heavyweight battle. Punches being thrown back and forth over and over again, and at the end, Louisville had the knockout blow. Louisville was dominant tonight on both sides of the ball. Their defense stifled that run-heavy West Point offense, and an offense led by a sophomore quarterback who orchestrated a game-winning drive when the team needed it most. When they went down late in the fourth quarter, there was absolutely no quit left in this team. I'll tell you what, I, to be honest, I, I didn't know how this young team was going to handle adversity, you know, but, but, you know, they showed me tonight. They showed me a lot, a lot tonight, you know, handling the adversity. They went down and scored, and we came right back and, and answered, you know. It, it, it told me a lot about them, man, and I'm proud of them. The Louisville Powercats, the 2024 A-State champions, are off on a great foot, and now that they beat a 5A powerhouse, there's no telling how far they can go, and the road doesn't get any easier for West Point. Next week, they'll be in Starkville playing the Yellow Jackets. In West Point, Cam Dyer, WCBI Sports. All right, thank you, Cam. How about Starkville, Columbus? The 30-minute trek east down 82. Yellow Jackets up 15-0 in the second, but the Falcons' defense coming up big time. Forcing a fumble. Starkville coughing it up. Offense 
wasn't able to get anything out of it on the ensuing drive. That was a little spoiler, but we'll show you. <laughs> this kid, Jonathan Methvin, great, 6'6", 240, coming up with a big-time I mean, sack he's there. your height there. Yeah, he is, and uh, he's a little bigger than I am, but that's all right. He's a football player. <laughs> ensuing drive, Jack Jenkins pulling off an impressive run. Does he break the plane? Officials say he does not. So what do you do when you're at the one? How about you punch give it, it in. punch it in with your quarterback who's Why been not? offered by Mississippi State? I mean, come on. That seems like the logical move. Trey Petty gets in there. They were up 22-0. Starkville gets it done 28-zip. Now let's go out to Tupelo, the Golden Wave hosting Lafayette. Pretty big crowd yeah, I there. I was going to say, nice crowd. About four minutes into the second, Tupelo leading 17-0. Commodores deep in their own territory and QB1 Charlie Fair passes downfield. He's picked off by Fred Adams and the Golden Wave in great position to put some more on the board. They give it to Jabari Dooley who picks up some tough yards but the Golden Wave and forced to punt. They give it to senior running back Jaden Reed for some more tough yards. He gets the first down then guess what it's Reed again running to that far side pick up another first down and the Commodores go again to who other but Reed Commodores can't score and the half expires with the score still 17 nothing, but Tupelo gets the win 34 to zero. This is a big one down in Oxford and Brandon down in Jackson. Yes, it sure is. And Shador Sanders is in the house to watch that one. Chargers down 9-0, but their defense picks it up in the second quarter. Ball tipped. Ryan Kirkwood comes down with the pick. Oxford faithful, pretty pumped okay. about that okay. one. Mac Howard now showing why he's a Utah committee. Hits Roman Gregory up the seam for the TD. 9-7. Great throw, Brandon. but that was one heck of a catch. It was. Here come the Bulldogs. Nate Blunt is a man, and he's going to be playing football for a while. He carries the Chargers oh, into the red zone. He just keeps turning those Four legs. Four guys couldn't tackle him. Landon Vernes is going to take it from here, calling his own number. He scores to extend the lead to 16-7. to seven. Oxford then falling to Brandon, 45-15. to 15. Okay, Caledonia, new hope. Not like the coin toss here. It looks timid, but it was a packed house out there in New Hope. First play of the game for the Trojans, Alex Dawkins showing off why he is such an incredible athlete. A 59-yard touchdown. Pretty sure I pulled my quad just watching that thing. <laughs> Trojans up 7 nothing early. They want to get off to a statement I mean, start. I get tired walking 59 yards <laughs> up and down the sidelines. I know. Uh, they force a three now. Caledonia punts it, but it is muffed. Oof. Oh, no. A big no-no. Hey, it's week one. Stuff happens. Caledonia only got three points out of it, so you could say it's a victory, I guess, for New Hope, only giving up that little 7-3. But then New Hope on three and out. So then senior Daniel Wilburn finding Charlie Sullivan. I don't know if it's busted coverage or what, but he goes 66 yards untouched. Caledonia up 10-7, but it was all New Hope, taking down the 4A North half runner-ups, 28-10. Corinth at Saltillo, and you know, they love WCBI. Who doesn't love of WCBI? Of course, that's The right. Warriors got the ball first, but the Tigers D with the sack, and then Corinth turns it over on downs. Tough. Then the senior QB, Clarence Johnson, it was time for him to get to work. He finds Milam Sanders over the middle for the first down. Over the middle, threading the needle. You know, then he hits RB, Braden Bowen on the sideline for another first Jeez, down. Yeah, impressive. some nice passes. Johnson on a flat pass coming up here to Ashton Ritchie, who's going to catch that ball and then scamper on for, guess what, another first down. He's quick. Unfortunately, that drive stalled out. Tigers failed to score, but Corinth goes on to win 28-2. to two. All right, let's see what's coming up next here. Shannon against Connor Armstrong and Ponotok, his first game back since his left shoulder injury. He's also a lefty, so uh, long recovery for him. How about South Ponotok taking on the Zy Fordless East Webster Wolverines? They didn't have him. Was that enough? We'll find out next. And Amory Panthers, fresh off a championship run, taking on Itawamba. Welcome on back into end zone. Shannon, Ponatok, the holler. Let's do it. Red Raiders up 16 to 8 in the closing minutes of the half, trying to add Jamarcus Shines. Dropping back, but Brian Crestman getting the backfield, sacking him. Next play, Shines taking a shot downfield to Degarius Clifton, who makes the grab, dives over the pylon for six. Look at that. Yeah, right in our 
Breadbasket. Shout out Stephen Pimpo. <laughs> uh, up 22 to 8 is Shannon. Warriors ensuing drive. Connor Armstrong with the time. Fires over the middle. That's Jaden Montgomery to set up Ponatok. It's another lefty there. Pass midfield. Yeah, he's coming off a big injury from last year. They're very excited to have him back. There's no doubt. Armstrong dropping back. Finding Justine Connor. But the ball bounces off him into the air. Looks like Davian Sampson is going to make the grab, but he can't hang on. Jacoby Riles there with a monster hit. Red Raider defense holds. Shannon gets it done. 40, or 30, excuse me, to 21. TCPS on over at North Pontotoc. Opening drive for the Vikings. Reese Kettner drops back and finds Tyler Pickens, who breaks the tackle and sets up North Pontotoc in the red zone pretty nicely, if I do say so myself. Drew Winfun now going to punch it in from the one-yard line for the game's first touchdown and put the Vikings up 6 to nothing. North Pontotoc looking for more in their second drive. Kettner going deep for Win Navarrete, who has his man oh. beat, but he bobbles that ball and Connor he wants Elliott that one back. is there to break that one up. He sure does. Kettner wasn't done, though. He finds Romeo Cornejo, who puts up the entire TCPS defense right behind him into the end zone. Vikings go up 12 to 0 to start the second quarter, and they hang on to win that one 43 to 7. Now on over to East Webster, the Wolverines hosting South Pontotoc. The Cougs. <laughs> the Cougs. Jackson Rogers takes a pass over the middle and goes 50 yards for the TD. <clears throat> However, this one is called back Man. for an illegal block. You know, a little Oof. bit tragic. Tough to see. Next play, Ethan Hillhouse picks off a pass and gets 78 yards for the pick six. The extra point is good, 21-0. to zero Top five East potential Webster. for that pick six. I, I think it is. South Pontotoc's next possession, same result. This time, East Webster's Adavian Hoskins takes it 65 yards for the pick six. A lot of pick sixes in this one, and East Webster goes on to win it 35 to 7. Amory Itawamba out in Fulton. This was a crazy one. Okay. A little 20-yard uh, little connection here to get the Panthers' offense moving. That was a heck of a throw, heck of a catch, you know, backtracking. Good for them. And then Ty Davis for Itawamba. Nice little 12-yard gain here. <coughs> Cute little baby there, of course. Uh, <laughs> Davis now, I mean, you know, Itawamba, very, very impressive in their first game. Another cute baby, look at that. Just cute baby galores. Okay. <laughs> That's how we like our highlights. That's right. All right, and now a 15, and now an interception there for Amory, but this was Itawamba. They end up getting it done 35 to 28. All right, let's get a couple more scores in there for you. New Albany taking down East Union 52 to 6. And Boonville, the Blue Devils, taking down Mooreville 30 to 24 as well. All right, coming up next here on End Zone, Choctaw County. Winona play it up in Starkville because of not so great field conditions in Ackerman. Nettleton, Euphora, we check in with our guy, John Keith, of course, to see how they were doing. And then Aberdeen taking on the Chieftains of Oklahoma. Welcome back to Enzo. Winona against Choctaw County at Starkville. That's not a typo. Field conditions bad, so they played there. All right, Choctaw County down 14-8. Bad snap. KJ Cork can't handle it. Winona's a Jerrion Garrett recovers it for the Tigers. All right, that's Winona's turn. Chase Richardson finding Tristan Richardson on an out route. He gets tackled by Jadarian Thames later on. Richardson back to pass, taking a deep shot towards the end zone. Troy Lando Eden drops what would have been a great catch and the drive stalls. Chargers back on offense, B.B. Kennedy. Grace, we were talking about this kid coming into the season yes, we for were. the Chargers. I mean, just looks like a grown man among kids sometimes with how strong he is. He's showing us why right now. I know, look at that. And that's not a knock on the kids. That just shows how strong this guy is. Yes. Steps out of bounds, hurdles a man. I mean, you know, you've seen it all before. Later on, Kennedy again punches it from three yards out for the touchdown. PAT good. Choctaw County up 15-14. But Winona gets it done, 40-29. Let's get you out to Eupora. They're hosting Nettleton. Opening play of the game, QB Ty Murphy goes 60 yards on the QB draw. And the two-point conversion is good. A little icing on the cake there. Eagles go up 8 to nothing. Oh, he almost runs into that guy, too. 
Now Nettleton, Jaden Hawkins, takes a swing pass, and he rambles all the way inside the Eupora 10-yard line. Okay. Setting up some nice field position there. I mean, can't get all the way to the end zone, but no. down to the 10 is pretty, pretty nice, It right? is, and the coaches will love to see that extra effort. On the fourth down, Braylon Williams' pass is picked off at the goal line by Eupora's Eli Clark as the Eagles' defense holds. That could be a top five. Falling that, on his back, bobbling it, that's a heck of a pick. That could be. Nettleton goes on to win 33-28. to Now I'll get you out to Oklahoma Aberdeen playing the Chieftains. Bulldogs get the ball first, and Jermaine Strong launches it 25 yards down the field to Justin Payne. Nice field positions to open up the game for Aberdeen. Then Strong scrambling, and you know what? He's just going to call his own number of straight in for the six points. Two-point conversion is no good, but Bulldogs still up 6 Nothing. Now, first-year head coach Anthony Watt couldn't get anything going for the Chieftains on offense. Most of the plays really just got stuffed at the goal line. And still first quarter, Bulldogs back in the red zone, and Joe Buchanan gets the handoff, and he's in for another six. Aberdeen goes up 12 to nothing to end the first quarter. Bulldogs just keep piling on. They end up winning it 36 to nothing, shutting out the Chieftains. Houston Calhoun City 4A visiting 2A. So Wildcats looking to get the upset. Jamaja Mays taking the handoff, trucking his way into the end zone. Calhoun City would tack on a two-point conversion, taking an eight-nothing lead. So in the first, Wildcats back on offense, dropping back to pass. Jalen Washington getting the pick. Right place, right time. But great field position. They can't do anything with it. Calhoun City back at it, but more trouble. Jackson Cook oh, fumbling no. the exchange. Yep. Kobe Pratt is there to pounce on the loose ball. Houston forces two turnovers in the first quarter. In the red zone, Jalen Washington getting it done on both sides of the ball, grabbing himself a touchdown here. It's the nicest kid, too. Oh, yeah. And tying the game up at eight, Houston rolled and got it done, 38 to 16. All right, Knox City County taking down Philadelphia, 51 to 15. How about the start for those Tigers? To Shamingo County, Beating Mantachi 42 to 16. And Water Valley, Brad Embry getting it done 47 to 26. And Kosuth beating Baldwin 20 to 6. Bruce, a shutout victory over Coffeeville 26 0. And uh, Grace, how about we look at the Cross Creek rivalry? I mean, what is more fun than the Cross Creek rivalry? Nanawoya Noxipator, first quarter. Kyle Phillips finds Keon Tucker in the end zone for the first points of the season. Tigers go up seven to nothing. Two drives later, Phillips is back with the ball and you know what, he can't hold on to it. That's the second consecutive drive that ends in a fumble for Noxipater. But good news is for the Tigers that, you know, Nanawaya really wasn't able to capitalize off of those turnovers. Here, Tanner Courtney looking for Eli Stanton. He's got him with the catch, but he gets trucked by that secondary. Did he make a football move, though? Was it a fumble? Do we need to go back to the tape? I mean, we'll see, but next play. Look who's already off to the races. Jitavius Riddle takes off, and he's gone. The Tigers Eesh. end the first quarter with a 14-0 win. Hang on to win this one, 27-6. And, John, that was their first Cross Creek rivalry win in how long? In a decade. In a decade. Speaking of teams trying to get on the right track, Hamilton, they got Wade Tackett in there, used to coach New Hope, trying to get the Lions on track at Hatley. This one out in Amory. Let's start out here at the goal line. Evan Pounders for Hamilton, trying to get things rolling, and he does. A couple nice little juke moves there. A little, Pounders pounded it in there. Yeah, looked like something I might do on Madden. Oh. Uh, anyway, 6 nothing Hamilton. Pounders having it in and off to Kaiser Werner. Bounce outside, shed some tackles, and ran all the way. Oh, man, he really weaved in and out there to get all the way downfield. He did. It's a shame it had to be called back because of a oh, penalty. Oh, not another one. You hate to see it, but they made up for it there. Pounders finding Werner. Instead, he just makes a sick catch. And then direct snap for Werner for the touchdown. Hamilton up 14-0. How about the Lions getting it done 41-6? Huge win for them to start out the season. All right, let's get a couple more scores in here for you. Uh, Biggersville beating West Lowndes 40-12. Biggersville could be a 1A state champ maybe by the end of the year. And Vardaman 
really met Myrtle rounds? had it. I know, 42 to nothing. All right, well, coming up next year, we have our Academy Games, Heritage Academy down at Jackson Prep. We also have some West Alabama games and more Academy as well. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Heritage Academy at Jackson Prep here. Patriots first quarter for the Patriots is going to hand it off to number nine, Lake Wom Oh, we're still looking at some fans here. Hey, man, so I, was, I, jumped, I jumped the gun a little I bit. Don't, I don't blame them. Man. Uh, it was crazy. They're having some fun there. Handed off to Lane Womack, but stopped in the backfield by number 21, Luke Fisher. And the Patriots answer with a deep pass downfield to William Laird. Set up with a rollout pass here to number 11, Will Upton, for the first touchdown of the night. Patriots go up 7 to nothing. Later in the second quarter, Patriots set up a run to the outside, and number on an old down 22, Owen Ishii, touchdown. All right, Can Academy, Winston Academy. Early on for Winston, Carson Watkins gets the handoff, gets a couple of yards, drive with stall. Can Academy's turn now. Chance Persack getting the snap, finding Jesse Primer. Nice catch and gain here. Trying to get something rolling later on. Watkins back to pass. You know I love the fade route. Yes. You know I do. Huge Another left-hander. And I'm sure they're, they're a pretty big fan of the fade route as well after oh. this. Yeah, I mean, look. 39-yard touchdown. Can Academy gets it done. 24-8. to eight. <laughs> Let's roll through some scores really quick for you. Humphreys Academy taking down Hebron Christian 44-6. to six. Columbus Christian, big road win, 1916. DeSoto Academy beating Calhoun Academy 52-6. to six. Oak Hill Academy 37 to nothing against Benton Academy. How about we take a look at the Gordo Green Wave taking on Babbitt County. We'll start out with the opening drive. Brax Garrison decides to tuck and run it himself to put Gordo on the board first. Two point conversion, good. Green Wave up eight nothing. Ensuing kickoff, Colby Columns breaking off a huge return for the Choctaws. That puts them in some red zone territory here, really turning on the Jets. That was actually very impressive. Extremely and impressive. That would set up a touchdown. So it was still 8 6 Gordo. Next Gordo drive, Brax Garrison. Throw a beautiful ball it's to wide receiver ball. Ethan Wilder. It really was. Could be top five potential. Who knows? Um, then Bibb County need an answer. Hand it off to running back Jason Taylor to bust in the end zone, closing the deficit. 15 12 Gordo. Bibb County would rely on Taylor again, handing it off. And so this would give Bibb County its first lead of the game. Grace, they ended up winning this game 56 to 21. Just ran away with it. Simply, simply put, ran away with it. Now let's go on over. Pickens County hosting Brilliant. And this game belongs to the Tornadoes tonight as number four, Camarion Plot is going to walk into the end zone. Pickens goes up, goes for two to make the score. 38 nothing. Pickens County driving again. This time, Demarcus Giles finds Santonio Jones on a screen pass, and he's going to make the defender miss go all the way. 45 to nothing. Tornadoes. Pickens County just dominating. Brilliant tonight as Elijah Merriweather takes this one from 31 yards out. They go on to win 52 to nothing. Big dub. All right, let's get a couple more. Phil Campbell taking down Lamar County at home, 30 to 24. South Lamar beating Holy Spirit Catholic, 41-13. Sullivan falling to Fayette County, 47-37. And Aliceville losing at center point, 48-18. High school football's back. A ton of great matchups tonight. Coming back, we will give our winners of the night and recap everything so you won't want to miss it. Stay tuned. Before we wrap up, Grace, who's your winner of the night? Have to go with the Louisville Wildcats. I'm going to pull a port. Courtney Robb, put it on my head. Mine's mine. The Golden Wave, Tupelo, 34 nothing over Lafayette. Thanks for joining us. See you next week. WCBI Sports End Zone Show with John Sokola, Cam Dyer, and Grace Ibarra is brought to you by OCH Orthopedic Center, Jax, Carl Hogan Toyota, Wade Incorporated, and Clark Beverage Group.